Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. R. Dallas. This is episode 17, where we'll talk about the high-level concept of design patterns. We'll look at some specific design pattern implementations in future shows. Don't forget you can follow Weekly Dev Tips on Twitter as well as in your favorite podcast app. And if you're finding these tips to be helpful, please take a moment to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. I would really appreciate it. This episode is sponsored by DevIQ. DevIQ offers online training for software developers and designers covering topics like UX, .NET development, and ASP.NET Core. Check them out at deviq.com. This week, we're going to talk about design patterns, which offer well-known, proven approaches to common problems or situations in software application development. I'll admit I've been a fan of design patterns for a long time. The idea of design patterns transcends software development, and in fact, the so-called Gang of Four book, Design Patterns, takes its organization and inspiration from the 1977 book, A Pattern Language. That book by Christopher Alexander describes common patterns in towns, buildings, and construction methods. But the idea that there are common patterns to solving similar problems applies equally to software, as well as traditional building construction and architecture. One thing that I think really appeals to me about design patterns is their ability to reduce waste. As software developers, we tend to want to increase efficiency and productivity, and one of the most frustrating parts of writing software, for me at least, is when I'm stuck on a problem. This frustration is even greater when it's a problem I feel like I should know the answer to, or that I know is relatively common, so someone has solved it before. Design patterns are a great way to help you avoid reinventing the wheel, or in many cases, inventing a giant square that you are hoping will work as a wheel. Unfortunately, you can't always use your usual search engine skills to come up with a design pattern. You usually have to at least be aware that it exists so that you can start to recognize scenarios where it might apply, or so that you know its name and you can search for it. Once you know that a pattern exists, and have at least a vague sense of when it might be used, then you can easily search for more information on how to apply the pattern when you think you might have a situation that warrants it. Thus, the first step in your path to pattern mastery is exposure. You need to spend at least a little bit of time learning the names of the patterns that exist and where they are used. If you haven't already, you'll probably find a few design patterns that you use all the time. You can go deep in your knowledge of how and when to use these patterns. Last week, I talked about becoming a T-shaped developer as a means of differentiating yourself from competitors. Your knowledge of design patterns should have a similar T-shape, but for different reasons. You want the wide breadth of knowledge so you can speak intelligently about patterns and know what terms to search for when you want to learn more. But many patterns have fairly specific uses, so there's no need for you to try and become an expert in all of them if you're not solving the kinds of problems for which some patterns are designed. I'm sure I'll have more tips about design patterns in upcoming shows, but one last reason why you owe it to yourself to gain at least a cursory knowledge of them is their value as a higher-level language tool. When you know a design pattern by name and how and why one would use it, you can discuss possible solutions with your team in a far more efficient and clear manner. The actual implementation of many patterns can involve several different types organized in a particular fashion, usually with specific inheritance or composition relationships. How these types are used by your system is another aspect of the pattern's implementation. Without knowing the pattern in its name, communicating a proposed solution to another developer would require describing at least most of this detail. However, if both developers are familiar with the pattern in question, one can simply say to the other, have you thought about applying the XYZ pattern here? And they can convey the same intent with less chance of confusion and with far fewer words. If you'd like to learn more about design patterns and go deeper into how they are implemented, I recommend the Design Pattern Library on Pluralsight as a good place to start. You can also reach out to me if you think your team would benefit from a private workshop on design patterns. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. See you next time on weeklydevtips.com.